All right, this is kind of a momentous moment here. Just pulled the camera out for the first time. I believe the date is Sunday, June 27th. And uh, my son and I just started the be beginning of our epic 60 night canoe trip, Quetico Park. We launched at French Lake and just paddled through uh, the Pickerel River. And we're just now entering Pickerel Lake. Um, we still haven't entered the main body of the lake, but it's a big, big lake. Normally we don't um, launch here, but because there's basically no wind today and we have 60 nights, uh, there's no portaging required to dump the boat in. Um, it's like 100 meters from the car to the lake here at French. And uh, everywhere else, like Stanton Bay, I think is almost 500 meters. We have a mountain of gear here for two months. We're not resupplying, so I didn't really feel like walking for five kilometers uh, to get three loads across the trail to start. So we're going to take it the easy way. Thankfully, the wind gods are on our side, and uh, we'll find a nice spot near the outlet of the Pickerel River about halfway up the lake, and uh, we'll probably set up here for a couple nights. I'm not going to film as much as I usually do because I just can't for 60 nights, but we're going to try and document, uh, for the most part, um, the whole trip every day and uh, hopefully lots of fish and lots of highlights. It's an exciting moment, eh, buddy? Yeah, yeah. Brendan's done lots of canoe trips with me, but this is like who does a 60-night canoe trip. It's crazy. So this is big. So I will turn the camera on when we get to our campsite and I don't know I got a pretty good idea roughly where I want to camp and uh, probably a couple hours from now we'll get set up and then uh, do a little bit of fishing right bud yep, hopefully. actually they're calling for severe thunderstorm war warnings like all day long it doesn't look like no it doesn't look like it <clears throat> there's no wind also no wind in the forecast for all day uh, so it's kind of odd usually there's a little bit of a wind when there's a front rolling in but We'll take it, because these aren't storm clouds here right now. It's, it's li literally perfect. And hot, like it's probably 22 degrees, but with the sun beating down on us, um, and like more or less not a breath of wind, I'm already like, <laughs> like kind of a little toasty, right buddy? Yeah, you usually don't see a flat calm on Pickerel Lake, so I guess we're lucky. Yeah, no, this morning we are, because normally, like, yeah, you're paddling right into the prevailing winds, and it can get nasty. So it's kind of a nice sort of easing our way in to this whole thing. That's the goal. Actually, I'm trying to avoid as portages for at least the first uh, probably almost three weeks. We're going to have to portage, but I'm just easing my way into this slowly. And then um, the latter half of the trip, it's a lot more traveling. Um, but for the most part, we're not really traveling every day. We're going to be setting up, we're going to be base camping, we're going to be no real huge travel days, lots of layover days, lots of fishing, and kind of just living in the moment. So, very exciting. But this is wild. I just cannot believe the lack of wind. We're so lucky. We're kind of paying the price though. Brenna's complaining about the heat. Right, buddy? Yeah. Anyway, I'd rather have this than like white caps in a headwind. So... Yeah, we're going to go for a swim for sure. All right, let's get going. We set up here on an island on Pickerel Lake. It's kind of the first major island right out in front of the neck down that leads into the outlet of the Pickerel River um, that leads into like Bisque Bag, Bud, and Fern. So beautiful little spot, nice compact little spot, fire pit. There's a little rock table over here. Everything's kind of a mess. But uh, great little spot. We had the tarp set up because it was actually thundering. A couple of little drops of rain, but uh, nothing really yet. Doesn't look like it's going to. And just a spectacular view. Brendan's been catching bass. Um, they're just <clears throat> the landing is a beach down here, and just all along this little sand spit, uh, he's been catching all kinds of bass. Haven't documented it yet, but he's been having fun. We're about to go out now. We actually haven't fished really in the canoe yet. So it's a little bit of a sketchy little rock to climb up and down, but it's not bad to get down here.
We're leaving all the heavy food packs down here. No need. Here we are. What do you say, buddy? I say, let's go catch some fish, hopefully. Yeah, I think we will. We're just messing around. We just got the graph set up and we trolled across, right? That's our island right there. It's like 25, 35 feet close to the island. Then we come up. Yeah, we come up on a flat. I'm just yapping. We got a big fish here. We come up on a 12 foot flat. You can see it right there. And just slammed this really big walleye. Like Brendan says, it's a, a 30, but it uh, will probably measure it. Like, holy crap. It's on this. Um, new Rapala Shad Dancer, like a smallmouth bass pattern. Oh, it's like so thick and fat, you can't even get your hand around it, eh? I mean, what a start. There's only, it's, like it's, it's like a, I know, like, I'm like, yeah, it's a smallmouth for sure. There's no way that's a walleye. And then it's like, yeah, it's got to be like an axe handle sized pike. What a start. And, you know, Pickerel Lake, I mean, no portage today. Couldn't have been easier. But that's like, I don't know, either really bad or like a, a really good omen. I'm not sure which. Be, just be very careful because that's those, the hooks, you know. But anyway, Bren knows what he's doing. We've done this a million times. Yeah, okay. I'll see what I can do. I'll multitask. That's not a problem. That's a big fat walleye. Yeah, it's so thick. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna tail it like a salmon. But it's gonna flop. Oh, oh my, god. my god. I gotta shut the camera off for a second here. Oh my god. We gotta put a tape measure on that. That's insane. Oh my god. Well, it was threatening all day. And boy, oh boy, did it ever hit us. <laughs> Within about 15 minutes. The thunder was kind of rumbling for all day, really, from about noon onwards. It's about 9 o'clock now. And about 20 minutes ago, this deluge just started. My tarp needs to be re rigged, but I'm not going out now to do it. So wait. Brendan is in the tent. Snug as a bug in a rug. And I'm out here, <laughs> admiring nature's fury. Just an incredible day one. A little bit of everything, including a giant walleye. Oh, this is wild. Unbelievable. Oh. Hey. <laughs> okay, this is our second full morning. Our campsite is right there on that island right there. Quite a contrast from last night when it was uh, like almost this biblical rain, just heavy, heavy, heavy rain. So we've just been working the water, like obviously close to the campsite. I found a shoal here, tops out at 11 feet. It's like 40, 50 feet towards that rock pile. We're surrounded by deep water, almost no wind. But we do have a, an anchor bag down, and we probably caught half a dozen walleyes on this spot, eh, Brent? Yeah. And uh, nothing else, just walleyes, but nice chunky walleyes, all on these white pearl colored uh, Northland Impulse paddle tails. Very nice. Long one, long yeah. One. It's going to be another hot day. I think it's the 28th of June today. And man, there's like no wind. I don't know what the temperature is, but it's probably like 23. 24. Oh, it feels, like it feels hotter. It's We're just baking. There's almost no wind. Can't wait to swim. Yes. Yeah, we are going to swim big time. But anyway, this is so fun. We're, we're going to eat fish tonight, but it's way too early in the day to keep them. So I got this little shoal marked on a GPS. There's another one over there where we caught the ginormous fish last night, like almost 10 pounds. There's actually plenty of good fishing, like within like a two-minute paddle of our campsite. Yeah, I'm sure there's millions of shoals like this on this lake. That's exactly so right. Knows about it. Well, Pickerel Lake is 
an access lake. Uh, there's a lot of people that base camp on it. Most just blast through to get to the interior. But even the guys that fish it, I mean, 99.9% .9 of these fish have never seen a lure. There's little subtle humps like this, that unless you seek them out and find them with your depth finder, you're never, never in a million years, unless it's, it's like getting struck by lightning and winning the lottery. Um, so they're really unmolested fish. After we fished our shoal, we're kind of just, we're in this sort of network of islands. And uh, the wind picked up, and this is kind of a weird spot. It's just like a, a little, oh, Brennan's got a snag. A little um, calm little cove here. It's like we were smallmouth fishing, and then we started Yeah, we were walleye. catching smallmouth, and then all of a sudden we caught two or three walleyes. In a row. Like every yeah. Yeah, pretty bizarre. They're just like pretty much everywhere. And I think Bren has like a four inch grub, like a sort of pearl and green colored grub on and I've still got the the paddle tail, the pearl, the pearl colored paddle tail on. And uh, another little walleye. It's a kind of a bizarre spot. Like, I mean, it's like, this protected little kind of shallow rocky weedy cove and they're in here nice lots of those guys day three we're all packed up we've got I, I think we were better packed actually um, when we launched our boat on on uh, French Lake we're gonna have to readjust this, but anyway, it's just a mountain, just a mountain of gear. I've never had so much gear in my entire life. Two month trip though. Anyway, it's hot and steamy, and there's like virtually no wind again, as you can see. And today's moving day. We're gonna see, we'll see how far we get and uh, how things go. This is going to be brutal. All right, we're here at the landing of the portage from Pickerel into Bisque. Just trying to take stock of our mountain of gear. This is our first portage. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven packs. And you can do them, plus a whole bunch of loose stuff. You can do the math for three carries. There's an old logging dam here on the Pickerel River where it flows out of the lake. My younger days, there's no freaking way I would portage this. I would just line it down. Nice pool down there. We just portaged from Bisque to Beg. It's just a short 180 around these rapids here. And Bren's already grabbed his rod and he's catching walleye. Nice. Or is it a smallmouth? Smallmouth. Whew. Awesome. I got two walleyes in like my first two casts. Nice, while I was still hauling gear. That's okay. See if you can catch another one. Okay. We're just at the end of the um, 180 meter portage uh, leading from uh, Bud into Fern. And I think, according to the map, there's one more lift over. Tiny little one right there. We went from here on Pickerel Lake. 
down through uh, bisque, bag, bud, and we're gonna hopefully find a spot on fern. There's like one 490 meter portage, 180 between busk, bisque, and bag, and then uh, actually we lined the boat down here. We lined that. There was a little lift over that we avoided. And then we're here at uh, this portage right here. And Bren just caught a fish. <laughs> Beautiful set of falls there. Top water. Killed the smallmouth. Yeah. Bren's slamming smallmouth on top water. Well, we made it to Fern Lake. Beauty little island campsite. It was tough. We didn't really travel that far. But triple carrying 80 pound loads when you're not in the best of shape is kind of hard. So the sun is sinking. We got a beautiful rocky point. Brendan's catching smallmouth on top water. I wish I had his energy. Is that a pike or a smallmouth? Oh, it's a big smallmouth. Nice. There's the new carbon fiber swift canoe. It's very awesome. Long. Very, awesome. If that was in like in the spawn, it would be like four pounds. This is probably three. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's very long. It's a nice chunky one. No, it's very long. Awesome. <clears throat> On the uh, Whopper Plopper knockoff, yeah. the three three dollar ninety nine cent lure. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. I don't know. It seems to be holding up so far. Yeah. Better than I don't know how much they normally cost. Yeah. We got kind of a late start. This is the inflow where it flows in from um, Bud into uh, that's a nice walleye yeah. nice yeah. solid walleye Very yeah beauty gnarly, yeah, yeah. Right. awesome that was just on a pro colored paddle tail I've been hammering fish on uh, you can't really see it but just um, a rattle trap like sort of a red and brown rattle trap it's not deep here but they're just like sitting in here there's tons of smallmouth tons of walleye just just sitting there I guess oh well it's like a feeding shelf yeah last night we there's a little lift over marked on the map right there we avoided that it was so awesome we just lined the boat down they're just mild rapids yeah there's a big fish and there's another something yeah little snake pike walleye and smallmouth bass galore you never know actually what you're gonna hook we're not even at what I would consider like the better lakes and this is okay but uh, but look at this it's such good fishing well, I hit them on the top of the head yeah so yeah Nice yeah, chunky little bass. Very fat. Nice job. Nice. We're just working our way down Fern Lake. We're actually in the big, long, narrow outlet that just ends up um, where the outlet of the Pickle River is, flowing into Oliphant. Tight neck downs are always a good spot. I was casting Bre for bass, and then I just, I was just like letting it sit there. It was actually crazy shallow where Bren hooked this walleye. Well, I'm like, <coughs> Oh, it's close to shore. It's like eight feet deep. It's not deep in this neck down at all. I have 76 degree surface temperatures on my graph. Anyway, that's what it's reading. No, he inhaled it. Yeah, awesome. It's a repeat of our first night on Fern. The fish turn on just as the sun is setting. 
Brendan's slamming fish off the point again. Yeah, it's a nice fat one. Yeah. It's a really nice fat, very wide. Awesome. Oh. Very nice on top water. Um, we're all loaded. I still can't get over this mountain of gear. It's ridiculous. We actually tried to condense things a little bit. We eliminated maybe, I don't know, three pounds of weight. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, today we're going to do a one kilometer portage into Oliphant Lake um, with three uh, carries. So it's roughly 80 pounds per load. The only thing that isn't actually 80 pounds is probably the barrel pack, which is probably about, I'm going to say 40 pounds. But uh, that's three, three carries, so three trips back and forth is going to be 5K of walking. And it's supposed to be like 28 Celsius again today. So we tried to get up as early as we could, but anyway, it's probably about 9 right now. We're at the end of the trail on Oliphant Lake. We made it, buddy. I don't know how we made it, but we did. We did it. It actually wasn't as bad as I expected. I was predicting three hours, and it took us two hours and like 15 minutes yeah. to triple carry three loads across uh, like a kilometer portage so basically like five kilometers of walking back and forth to get the three loads this is where the Pickerel River flows into Oliphant Lake beautiful little spot look at that right beside the canoe <laughs> right while we're messing around here little snake yeah, some big bass yeah there was some there was some actually yeah. super huge bass I had Oh, got unbuttoned. I, I had one on my rattle trap. Twice I had them on just before we loaded the boat. So we're just entering the main body of Oliphant, and I believe that little island dead ahead is going to be our home for the next few days. Beauty spot. It's um, not a spot I would ever camp at in bad weather or spring, but with 30 degree temperatures every day, I have high hopes for this spot. Great. We are at uh, this beautiful four-star campsite, island campsite, on Oliphant Lake. Anyway, really it was a one-kilometer portage to get in here. Um, it actually took less time than we expected. I think I mentioned earlier when I was filming, like two hours and ten minutes. Sounds like a lot, but it's like three 80-pound loads. So, anyway, this spot is awesome. The tent, obviously, right on the point there. It's just absolutely beautiful, like the literal definition of a room with a view. Nice little kitchen area. I set the tarp up over top of the uh, fire. When we have fires here, I don't ever, ever have fires uh, for ambiance. It's just small, small fires for cooking, and they're calling for some rain. Uh, so, And I got my stove set up here on this rock. So small, small fires that aren't going to spark up that much. That's the way I roll. We keep all of the food packs down by the water. Um, not hauling them up, no need. They're all waterproof, and uh, we just take what we need as we need it. I'm not going to portage those things one foot further than I have to. So check this out. Like, look at this view. It's unreal in this beautiful rocky point. We went swimming for about half an hour after we got here. <clears throat> it's hot today again, like 28 Celsius. Virtually no wind. But we're staying cool. It's just a beautiful spot. Hey, Bren? That's pretty nice, yeah. Gorgeous. So we're just going to go out fishing now. Just right off the island and we'll see if we can catch a few walleyes or bass there's we just beached the canoe this is the outlet of the pickerel river this is a spot i camped at a couple times in years past but we're just going to walk around the trail and fish the pool at the base of the rapids it usually always a good spot gorgeous spot Looks good.
<laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> Little bass. And a bass. <clears throat> Little bass. Brought the top water, Throw it further into the back eddy on the other side. Yeah. Anyhow, we uh, just on the spur of the moment wasn't planned, but we decided to move today because really we only have one like roughly 400 meter portage from Oliphant into Sturgeon and then uh, there's no more portages so I think it wasn't actually even planned either we were going to go into Antoine but uh, we're going to follow the path of least, least resistance today just paddle down Sturgeon into Sturgeon Narrows and just jog up into Russell and grab one of the nice five-star campsites on Russell and spend a couple days there then we'll slip back down I didn't really film much of the travel, but we traveled today. I didn't film any of the travel, but we traveled today from Oliphant Lake to Russell Lake. A little bit of a challenge, um, but really we only had one portage. Um, so, and then just we paddled right up the Swifts leading into uh, R Russell. There was no lift over, no nothing, so it was super easy. I just have to show you this campsite. So it's on this giant sort of central island in the middle of the lake. Um, it's impossible to see. I can't zoom in with this particular camera, but we're directly facing uh, this huge rapids waterfall, whatever it is, flown into the lake there. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful rocky point right here. It's just stunning. And then this is like the five star campsite. It's just amazing. <clears throat> so here we have the living room area with our fire pit. fire pit area so bear in mind it's incredibly hot right now so this site is in kind of this grove of cedar trees right on this point that sticks out from the, the island all shaded and there's a nice breeze flowing through here right Bren? Yeah. <clears throat> and there's no bugs right there's, no bugs. there's nothing so the, the campsite the island campsite on Oliphant was okay but it was literally overrun with uh, ants. We were calling it Ant Island. Not a single ant here. Anyway, there's a big log that fell and someone like cut it off with an ax on the top to make it flat. You got everything set up here under our kitchen tarp. Just a perfect, perfect flat spot here for the tent right under these cedar trees. It's just beautiful. And what makes a five-star campsite a campsite, I'm pretty sure, the way they rate them, you got to have a sandy beach landing. That's the difference between a four and a five-star, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, someone will correct me, I'm sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Anyhow, we have that on this side of the campsite. Got this beautiful, beautiful little sand beach. It's absolutely spectacular. Brendan and I are anchored in this um, neck down here. Saddle actually between the mainland right there and there's a small island. Russell Falls flows in over there and it kind of, I think there's even, it's hard to tell with the wind but I think there's mild current through here. But uh, we're slamming the walleyes and the odd bass pretty good. I probably caught half a dozen, Brendan's caught three or four. We just got going here. You getting bites there, bud? Yeah. yeah. You would never go hungry on pretty much any lake in Quetico. I think we're going to keep a couple of these little walleye for dinner tonight.
Yeah. I don't know if the, the uh, mic picked that up. Brendan's like, that's the smallest one yet. I think he's right. I keep shutting the camera off and on. It's just, I got about a six pound pike a second ago and another half dozen walleye. That's a, uh, yeah, it's in a slightly above average. We've been getting small walleye here. Slightly above average walleye. This, this saddle is just, it's infested with fish. Wild. We just pulled up on shore here to grab some dinner walleye. I just cleaned up, I think, five or six. Brenda's continuing to catch them. Yeah, the, one of the lucky ones. He just missed his fate there. Beautiful spot here. Falls is right up there. There's kind of current curling right down in front of these rocks. And it's stacked with fish. It's actually easier fishing from shore than it is from the canoe. So, I just cleaned up a bunch right there. Got a nice bag of meat for tonight. It's like absolutely perfect. Could not be better. And our campsite is right over there. On that rocky point over there. Just an amazing spot. Brendan uh, was too quick on uh, the reeling in there. I was just about to throw the camera on. We're back in our little saddle between this island and the mainland where we pounded fish this morning on Russell. And they are still here in abundance. And the best thing is we got some cloud cover. We got just a nice little breeze. We're not roasting hot. Got some blue. Yeah, cool. That's a nice fatty. Again, just paddle tail plastics, three and a half to four inch. It doesn't really matter about anything sort of white or pearl or shad colored seems to be working, so we're sticking with it. And there it is. This is a very small thing. Yeah. It's a small one, that's okay. It's the smallest one yet. Today is, I think, high of 28. Tomorrow, same. The next day is a high of 18. So there's obviously a huge front moving through. Fully expect there's going to be a, subst a substantial thunderstorm. That kind of looks kind of Yeah, well, yeah. Those are, those are towering cumulus clouds. The precursor for a thunderstorm. So it's possible we could get something this evening. But for sure, tomorrow night before this front rolls in. I'm getting updated forecasts from back home um, through the inReach. They're my buddies sending me exact details on what's going on in this area, which is handy. I don't exactly know why, but um, the stable flies, they're pretty much the only thing. And there's another one. They're tormenting us. No surprise. Another, another little dink, yeah. The second we got in the boat and paddled out on the lake half an hour ago, like a swarm of these things descended on us. It's morning of day nine. We <clears throat> just packed up earlier this morning at our beautiful campsite in Russell Lake, and we're about to head down through uh, these swifts here, which we paddled up a couple days ago. Piece of cake. Really pretty, 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 pretty piece of real estate here. We've got this gigantic load. This massive superstructure, if it was anything beyond this little swift, I doubt I would run it. It's a little sketchy, but we're, we'll be fine. The second we get close to shore, like a hundred stable flies descend on me. We could go right alongside those rocks on the right side and cast out a jig, maybe. Sure. Okay. 
Nice little smallmouth. Yeah. So Brendan and I still haven't decided yet where the destination is today. We have two choices, Fred Lake or there's a spot on Sturgeon where I know there's a five-star site. Either decision requires no portaging. Just can't decide yet what I want to do. I think it's mostly going to depend on like which the wind is pretty bad. I'm trying to figure out uh, once we head out to the main body of Sturgeon uh, what's going to be easiest because we'll probably take the path of least resistance. Another nice smallmouth. Nope. We paddled against this brutal, brutal headwind from Russell Lake to this beautiful, beautiful spot. It's uh, Sturgeon Lake. It's on the mainland, just above Scripture Island. That's the northern tip of Scri Scripture Island right there. So, I just had to show everybody this spot. I'm on this rocky point. It's up high. It's a bit of a hike to get up here. But this spot is a beauty. Ho, 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 ho. That's the view from the front. It's got a beautiful little fire pit with a fantastic, fantastic view. Flat spots for multiple tents here, but I set mine up on the flattest spot. Absolutely fabulous. Brendan is out on the point on this side. He's caught about a dozen fish from shore so far. We just had a huge meal. I went swimming. Brent's just fishing off this point. How many have you caught? Yeah, he says he's got a lot. <laughs> This is our beach down there. I'll show you what the walk is like, but it's a perfect landing. It's a, just a perfect, perfect sand beach. Not a stone or a rock in the water. You can wade way, way out into the lake when you're swimming, which I just did. It's a bit of a hike to get up here, like I said. Very, very worth it though. Oh my goodness. It's a little sketch. Someone built some steps here, kind of. It's not too bad. A little overexposed here, I know. Like, wow, what a spot. Every spot I camp on, I'm like, this is the best campsite I've ever camped on. Definitely recency bias. This is a beauty, though. I love this part of sturgeon, too. It's fantastic fishing. Still just a perfect evening. It's after dinner. It's starting to get a little later. The sun is sinking. Brendan is fishing on this side of the point. A crazy deep drop off here. And there's a fish right there on cue. Uh, nice little walleye. Yeah. Tomorrow, if we have fish, I'll just send you down here. We'll take them right from the lake. I'll clean them right here on the rock and then right into the pen. Morning of day 11. 
again I've said this a few times but I haven't been filming nearly enough um, just been sort of caught up in the moment I'm trying to document things as best as I can yesterday uh, well I'll write about it in my story but we had a little bit of an issue pretty much the entire day day 10 was a write-off it's a long story there's details to it but two of our three paddles were lost and I spent eight hours paddling around Brendan was in the front on the lookout but I paddled all the way around up and down for probably 20 kilometers following the wind looking over in every nook and cranny um, and uh, eventually right at the end of the day we found one of the paddles thank the Lord we don't have a spare anymore so from here on in we're gonna have to be extremely careful but I'm not overly concerned about that and today we have a beautiful 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 day the sky cleared up it's supposed to be a high of 21 light wind the wind is I think from the south it kind of swirls in this neck down here but honestly it's just perfect shortly after we started I caught a couple of pike I got a pike on the live target we stopped at this big rock right there and Brun got a nice smallmouth on a jig and I got two more pike um, one on a rattle bait and the other one on the live target it is the morning of day 12 I'm guessing probably about 930 beautiful day we uh, were just leaving this five-star mainland uh, campsite on the uh, east end of Sturgeon and we're gonna paddle a pretty long way down to the west end and then try and make our way up Jean Creek into Burtside Lake with uh, you got a better view of our mountain of gear here we're actually managing okay though eh? Oh uh, well I don't know about that but we're doing it so whatever three years ago on our first Quetico trip we paddled down this direction on Sturgeon Lake under identical conditions like Glasscom I don't know we must have someone looking out after us because this is incredible so lucky just a beautiful beautiful morning to paddle uh, took about two hours just not really pushing it lollygagging kind of but it was a really pleasant paddle no strain whatsoever and we are about to enter Gene Creek and we don't know we're gonna find out pretty soon I'm gonna shut the camera off and then turn it on again shortly but we're gonna find out real quick whether this is gonna be doable or not because I have no desire to add like an 800 meter portage to the day just don't have it in me if the creek is dried up and not paddleable eh, well we're gonna switch gears but we'll find out soon so far so good we just entered it there's a nice deep little channel we'll see how long this lasts oh I'm gonna say the water is um, it's about the same time of the year we're about I don't know like a week or ten days earlier than we were here three years ago in July water's got to be two feet lower it's unbelievable but we had a crazy crazy early spring this year and not a whole lot of rain and it's just been almost like a drought condition we just had a little lift over over a small beaver dam and hey there's actually a little more water up here this is okay so if we can paddle all the way to where we're supposed to be able to paddle we have like an 80 and 90 and a 120 or something like that three little short ones back to back to get into Burnside which is pretty easy all right we will continue on on this beautiful day and beaver dam number three this one was even higher well we made it to um, Rouge Lake which is basically connected to Burntside through a channel navigable um, channel so we're done our ports today it was showing three short ones on the map there was really only two uh, plus I don't know five Beaver Dam leftovers, four. 
it wasn't really a big deal. Both portages were like around 100 meters. We got one more little tight gap to navigate through and then we're more or less in the bottom end of burnt side. At least the east side of burnt side. Super pretty through here. We had to backtrack out the same way and uh, like I said to Brent a minute ago, I think we're going to uh, get up earlier, try and beat the heat. You just got to watch your rods there around the cedar. But it's absolutely stacked in June, earlier in June, like a month ago. Yeah, that's with the camera. Yeah, it's like a pound and a half, two pounder. Oh, he swiped at it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't you have a rod with a jig? I do. There's like half a dozen, like two, three pound bass and a bunch of smaller ones swimming around in this little shaded pool. There you go. Welcome to Burnt Side. Very nice. <clears throat> There's so many baths in here, I mean. Oh, bye-bye. It's about 4.30. We just finished setting up camp. I'm about to have a sort of a pre-dinner dinner. dinner. But here's a quick tour of the camp. We got the tent right here. It's almost a perfectly flat spot, but it's nice flat, soft grass under this big pine tree here. All nicely shaded. And a pretty sweet spot here. Got a fabulous view from our little kitchen area. What do you say, buddy? Looks pretty good. Yeah, I think so. So tarp set up here between the trees. We've got our little cooking area here. Everything's all kind of looks sort of in dis disarray, but uh, that's organized. And then a little fire, giant cooking rock here. Pretty cool. There's another fire pit over there if you want to have a campfire on the lake. And holy smokes, what an awesome view. The thing I like about this spot is it's not a long haul to haul your gear up <coughs> to the camp. It's almost like a, the other one was beautiful, but it was almost like a portage. And this is like our canoe landing. We've got like a little, almost like this little inlet and there's just enough water to float it up in here. Just awesome. I have been bad, have barely been filming. So we've caught millions of fish so far in between my last little segment there. It's our uh, evening of our second day on burnt side. We're working the shady shoreline, throwing these little... Uh, good eater bass right there. Yeah, good eater bass. Yeah. That's some delicious bass. We're using these little, um, like, knockoff Whopper ploppers. They're awesome. They're like $4. They work way better than the, I don't know. They work good. They're they're, the right there's nothing wrong with them. They're perfect. It's been so, so hot. We fished for like two, three hours this morning. Then Brendan had heat stroke and wanted to come in. And then 
We hung out at camp. I did laundry. We went swimming. We read a book. We each were reading a book. And then I went out by myself just to teach Brendan a lesson. And I, I was feeling sick. No, he wasn't. He's lying. He was he wimping out. And I caught dozens and dozens of fish when yeah, I was by yeah, myself. Sure I'll catch some more. Well, we got to paddle up the shoreline so I can film this epic topwater bass. This looks very bassy. Bassalicious. There you go. Oh, we're about to get blinded by the sun. He got a little pecker. Well, I don't. You probably do. Uh, oh, he's chirping now. Don't forget who changed your diapers. I wouldn't be talking about that if I were you. Another decent little smallie. <clears throat> this is like average size smallmouth. There you go. Oh, he's got big followers. You should throw in there. He's got three followers on him. Yeah, there's a there's a few nice bass sitting off this point. It's all bouldery, a little too shallow and tight, but it, it extends way out, like six to eight feet deep, with all big boulders way out. So we started casting out into the lake. Nice little football. <laughs> yeah. Just twist them off. That's okay. There you go. We're just now on the back side of our island. It seems like basically any shoreline that has boulders that drops into deeper water is money. That's a solid fish on the El Chapo. El Chapo. Let's see if I can get this out. You need the L forceps. Love barbless. Pops right out. Very nice. I don't know. Beauty. Two and three quarters. That one might have been three. I'm not sure what morning this is. 15th? But uh, we're leaving Burnt Side. I barely filmed the last couple days. We, we basically did nothing because it's been so hot, zero wind, it's been oppressive, so we just basically swam Red Bucks yesterday, and we're going to backtrack back out to Sturgeon today, and find a campsite near the outlet of the mine. This is pretty cool. see in the sky there looks like haze but um it's probably like 90 percent fire smoke i've been getting daily updates on the inreach device and uh there's currently seven fires burning and mostly in central quetico and to some to the south and uh that is pretty much fire smoke crazy like it's more or less like a clear blue sky and it's like this crazy haze, almost like fog. I'm not like overly concerned about it, but boy oh boy, 
August can't come soon enough. Like I'm just we're just dying for cooler weather. Some cloud, even cloud would be great. Rain would be like amazing. It's a crazy heat wave. In any case, we're on our way out the way we came in. We got two short portages in the neighborhood of 100 meters, um, and then down the almost dried up Gene Creek at over four or five beaver dams. But uh, the plus side going back out is we know exactly what to expect. Um, when it's the unknown and you don't know what to expect, it just seems to be worse. So we know what's in order and should be easy. It's a relatively early start for us, 9.30. Um, we're not going far, so we're not in any huge rush. It's going to be an easy day. This is wild. The symphony of loons just saying goodbye to us. We made it out of Burntside and set up on this little island here. It's right near the outlet of the Maline River. It's a absolutely gorgeous little spot with an amazing view in this direction. Probably the worst canoe landing I've ever seen in my life. It's just horrible. You can see the sun up there, I think, sort of. It's pretty much obscured by like fire smoke. There's some high level cloud, but it's mostly fire smoke. And we're going to go fishing now. We just worked our way down towards the first portage here on the Maline. You can hear the roar of the waterfall just in that direction there. Trolling cranks, we just stopped. There was a bit of a hump. Brendan took one cast close to shore with a shad dancer. It's a little bit shaky right now. Yeah. I, pause. I paused it and he just slammed it. Nice. I got this behemoth. I got a little baby small one. Yeah, double header. I gotta try and get Brendan to take a picture of this beast. On a jig. Five. Yeah, that's a fatty. Okay. Yeah. I got a crazy double going here. Oh, mine just jumped. Oh. They're so strong, it's just unreal. Come to Papa. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Beauty. Awesome. Oh my goodness. I love Quetico. I just tossed the crankbait out like five feet and I'm just trying to, there's this little deep pocket before it gets shallow and I just, you know. Nailed a nice water. walleye. Yeah, and then walleye. That's on the uh, new Rapala Shad Dancer. It's kind of like a cross between, not surprisingly, a Shad Rap and a Tail Dancer. The walleyes approve big time. 
very nice. It's so amazing though. And the little snake. It's just we've been just suffering for days and days on end now with just this blazing, blazing heat and humidity. I don't even know what the Humidex is, but the actual temperature has been around 30 Celsius every day. But we've got this cloud cover, along with fire smoke, but it's predominantly cloud cover right now. And it's just absolutely joyous. Oh. We just anchored in my first cast. Yeah. I just got, I don't even know what this is. Yeah, Bren's got a good one. I got one on two. I can't even know what I got. It's a smallmouth. Oh, it's making a wake. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, 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 bump. bump. Oh, it's a it's pike. A pike. Oh. Lordy, lordy. Ooh. Chunky monkey. Yep. Not bad at all. Nice little fatty. Brandon hopped out on a rock and he's just tossing cranks. Yeah, almost every cast. I got low battery, so this might die. Another nice smallmouth. Oh, that's a nice chunky one. Let me get a picture of that guy. Beauty. Very nice. It's uh, the morning after the big bonanza at the outlet of the Maline. We just sort of started fishing. Brendan hooked what appeared to be a pretty big fish just before this smallmouth. Trolling a um, what were you trolling? Uh, shad, dancer. shad dancer. No leader, and it bit him off. And uh, now he's got this sort of oversized live target perch on with the heavier trolling rod, and uh, pretty decent smallmouth just smacked it. Not huge, but yeah, beauty. Yeah. We spent a bit of time just pounding on fish just above the rapids where we got them last night, and. Uh, trolling our way back to camp got the big guns on Brendan's got the big giant live target perch on again pretty decent pike oh this is like a game of like just patience and perseverance I know there's big fish all through here it's just a matter of putting in our time and you'll get for sure 40 inch class fish Very good. Not bad at all. We had a little bit of a wind here this afternoon. We didn't do much for most of the day after we fished this morning. And we just went back out trolling the live target perch fairly close to camp. We got a bit of a stiff breeze from the south here today. Something just slammed Brendan's. It's coming in like a log. I feel like it's a wall high, but I don't know. It could be a pike. It's a walleye. It's walleye. Not bad, not bad. Giddy. Okay, so Brendan and I are currently on day 16, I think, yeah. of our 60-day Quetico trip. We were camped on a small island here, just where we were camped on the small island right at the outlet of the Malayan and set to head down the Malayan to the southern part of the park, where really the highlight of the trip was for both of us with the lakes we wanted to visit down there. And guess what? 
We are packing up and heading out. There's currently seven fires burning in Quetico. The whole southern half of the park is under a travel ban. And I just can't believe this is actually happening. But we're actually going to call this trip short. Um, we're going to go head out. We'll be out of the park in a couple of nights. And we're not giving up on the canoeing. We're going to be driving north to Wabakimi and starting a new trip north of Wabakimi in about six days. <laughs> so nothing will ever deter us. We just got to, you got to roll with the, what's going on and adapt and uh, that's what we're doing. So we have a long, long day of paddling down literally the entire length of Sturgeon Lake east to west and then once we get to Sturgeon Narrows all the way to the north up to Du Riviere and we got to hope and pray that it's paddleable. I personally don't think it will be. They had a uh, report on June 25th, which was like more than two weeks ago, that it was paddleable. But I'll bet you the water levels dropped since then. So I think it'll be a miracle if we can paddle through. I think we're going to be dragging this giant canoe filled with a mountain of gear through black leech infested swamp muck. <laughs> But anyway, our goal today, I think, is probably Dore Lake, which should be totally doable. And under normal circumstances, it's just like a short, a relatively short paddle, like once we get up to the top end of Sturgeon Lake, relatively short paddle up the, the Du Riviere. Uh, I think there's three beaver dam liftovers to um, Twin Lakes, and then it's, I forget, like a... It's a reasonable portage from Twin Lakes into uh, Dore. And then if we could get to Dore, that would really be good. And then uh, after Dore, we would have one more night on Pickerel and then out the following day after that. So I can't believe this is happening. But anyhow, it is what it is. Adapt or be uh, engulfed, in flames. engulfed in flames. That's right. That's what Brendan just said. All right, anyway, we're off. It's fairly early in the morning. I'm just having my coffee here. Oh, Brendan had a nice fish on there. Got off, eh? Oh. We had a long day of travel. It was like, I just measured it. It was like 34 kilometers of travel. All the way up Sturgeon from the outlet of the Malign to Dore Lake. I think we got here at 7 p.m. last night. It was... Pretty tough. Anyway, I was just sitting here drinking my coffee and I yelled to Brendan in the tent because there was fish busting on the surface off the point and that got him up. So I'm not sure what, this is like day 17, something like that. It's supposed to be of day 60. I've mentioned this several times already, but this was supposed to be a 60-day trip. But we're cutting the trip short because of forest fires and much of the park is actually closed to travel. So rather than rearrange the route to lakes that I find less interesting, and quite frankly, like the whole park is in danger of fire, like the... Um, there's fires all over. They're spread out everywhere. So even if we do stay, like it would be probably slightly risky. Anyhow, doesn't matter. It's a moot point. We're headed to Wabakimi. We're going to do a month in Wabakimi. So it's not what I had planned, but it's pretty awesome. Got a pretty easy day today. We've got like a 500 meter portage from Dore into Pickerel. And then hopefully a tailwind. We're going to paddle down to the um, east end to French Lake. Hopefully stay at the Pines tonight. There's uh, sandy beaches down that way close to the campground. And then we'll have an easy paddle out on our last morning. <laughs> 